draft is how the first quarter of 2011 has been described. No sooner had one disaster ended, another began. From massive floods to devastating earthquakes, growing civil unrest across the planet, a biblical-sized tsunami and a nuclear meltdown. It's no surprise that questions are being asked. Is there a deeper meaning? Are these events linked? And is there more to come? Many say that in 2012, conditions are rife for the perfect storm and more destruction on our planet. So is the end of the world closer than we think? And how much more can we take? The death toll is now at 613. Christchurch has been hit by a devastating earthquake. An unknown number of people are still trapped. It's been nearly 24 hours since a powerful earthquake touched off a huge tsunami that swept across Japan's east coast. Our thoughts and our prayers are with the people of Japan. of 2010-2011 will be remembered as our summer of sorrow. No doubt we've all been shocked by the events of the past 100 days. As humans, it's our nature to question. Are these events connected? Is this all just a terrible coincidence? Does science hold the answer? Or is this the beginning of the end, with December 2012 the final date? Tonight, we pose that question to the experts in astrophysics and seismology. We hear from authorities on religion and ancient mysticism. And we get some plain speaking from skeptics too. Is this panic for no good reason? Or should we be concerned? You decide. As planet Earth woke to the first day of 2011, residents of Argentina woke to a massive magnitude 7 earthquake. Almost simultaneously, an earthquake hit the Sichuan province in southern China, and with it, 100 aftershocks. Around 148,000 people found themselves homeless on the first day of the year. Has this year been more active than uh, most? Well, the start of 2011 has been a particularly active area worldwide. January 2nd, 2011, and another earthquake. This time in Chile, measures 7.1. We have periods uh, where there's above average activity. We don't totally know why it happens. January 11, disaster struck closer to home. Queensland was experiencing the worst floods in living memory. Well, just 10 months after being hit by a once-in-a-century flood, the people here are now bracing for an even bigger round two. It's not a pretty picture. Is it worse than what we thought it would be? Oh, without a doubt. This disaster has rewritten history. The recovery will have to match. This is a disaster on an unprecedented scale and it will require an unparalleled rebuilding effort. We have had floods before in Queensland, we've had cyclones before, but we've never had a disaster on the scale of this one. The first three months of this year have not been typical. There is no doubt that this year has been really tough. Well, look, the floods are obviously tragic. People died, lost a lot of property, and I'm upset about that. But in another way, I also see this as a return to the Australia that was wetter about uh, 30 or 40 years ago. You know, you've got to realise the world isn't as safe as we like to pretend it is. It's wild and much bigger than we are. Get used to it. A Category 5 Cyclone Yasi smashed into North Queensland at midnight with wind gusts well over 200 kilometres an hour. There's no doubt that uh, we've been king hit by these disasters. We have had clusters of disasters in the past and we're having one now. Because it is so close to 2012, 2012ers see this as a sign that the prophecies are coming true. 
The 2012ers base their prophecies on the ancient Mayan calendar, which began over 5,000 years ago. But on December 21st, 2012, it runs out. The Mayans made this amazing thousands of year long calendar, which eventually finished on December 21st, 2012. Did they say it was going to bring the end of the world? No, they didn't. But what they did predict with incredible accuracy was solar cycles. Now, 2012 just happens to be the peak of an 11 year solar cycle. The Maya and the Egyptians were able to calculate when the magnetic field of the sun will change. If you study then this theory, you find that a big solar event will happen. And here's where science and ancient mysticism kind of agree. At 2012, we'll see at the peak of activity in the sun's uh, magnetic uh, field. It, it will see uh, the possibility of large-scale solar storms. Uh, they're caused by things called solar flares, and an X-class flare is the most intense, and we might see X-class flares next year. So the uh, possible effects are changes in communications. It tends to be short-wave communications that are actually most at risk. NASA says any moment in time it can happen and what NASA is saying is almost as bad as what I am saying because if the electric grid system goes down 90% of all Americans, Europeans and Australians will die within one year. If you don't have any electricity then you don't have any food, there are no planes, there are no cars and so on and so on and it will be back to the Middle Ages then. And here's how Hollywood depicted that exact scenario. On February 15, the solar storm sent a massive solar flare, blasting to Earth at about 900 kilometres per second. And with it, electromagnetic storms, which totally jammed shortwave communication in China. There's an atmosphere of the sun, which is where we see these magnetic phenomena. And that is where these, what are called solar flares, which are essentially balls of gas. Sometimes they're twice, three times as big as the Earth. It's almost like a cosmic burp coming from the sun. In extreme cases, you can find a situation where power grids are overloaded, so all the switchgear trips out and so you lose power. The last uh, episode of that kind took place in 1989. It was in Quebec when nine million customers lost their electricity because of the solar storm. So is this what the ancient texts are predicting? Something's going to happen in 2012. We don't think the, oral, the world's going to explode or, or it's the end of, of everything at that point. But there is, well, there is this feeling that we're approaching a very interesting time. NASA actually had an article saying, what we're experiencing now, it would be pretty much like you're on the freeway with a, a group of Toyota Corollas, all the same, and all of a sudden you are passed by a whole fleet of Lamborghini Diablos. And it's like that's what we're being experiencing right now as far as cosmic particles. Solar storms, floods and earthquakes, a world in turmoil. But over in Egypt, a storm of a different kind was brewing, and this one was playing out on Facebook. So I think the question in our times is, is, is it that there are more disasters happening around the world, or is it that we're able to watch them in real time unfolding on YouTube? Look, certainly it has been said by many, including one of the individuals credited with starting the Egyptian uprising that it would not have happened without Facebook, and that is extraordinary. Uh, this gentleman was a senior marketing executive at Google. He created a Facebook page in a memorial to a young man who had been beaten to death by the Egyptian security forces. There are reportedly 15 million users of Facebook in the Middle East, 5 million in Egypt alone. And the government tried to shut it down, and it didn't work. One of the strategic mistakes of this regime was blocking Facebook. They forced everyone who was just, you know, waiting to read the news on Facebook, they forced them to go to the street to be part of this. So countries where there's normally been heavy government censorship, people are able to put their messages out there on Facebook and on YouTube and on Twitter, inspiring other people to act, organizing themselves, mobilizing crowds. In February of this year, the interest on 2012 websites spiked again, when for the second time in less than six months, nature unleashed its fury on Christchurch, New Zealand.
Christchurch has been hit by a devastating earthquake. 6.3 on the Richter scale. While we all watched in horror the images of Mother Nature at her worst, humanitarian organisations were quick to point out that this was society at its best. We have uh, some people who were involved in Queensland and then, uh, you know, all the, both first of all the floods and, uh, and then the cyclone and then involved in Victoria and then were involved in the New Zealand earthquake. It feels as if you've lived 10 years in one and the emotional impact on everybody or any human being who cares uh, is very great indeed. You know, it really has a huge impact. Believers in astrology say this was always going to be a time of turbulence. The last 100 days have been textbook that astrologers would expect for the move of Uranus into Aries. It's been chaotic, there's been social upheaval and nobody really has any idea of what's going to happen next. Seismologists believe there is no way to predict the next massive earthquake. What they can offer is an educated guess. Earthquakes happen far more often on the plate boundaries. And uh, earthquakes in anywhere on the plate boundaries, around the Pacific, wherever, uh, are far more likely than elsewhere, and that's a pattern that's been recognised ever since earthquakes have been studied. Uh, we've got the ring of fire around the Pacific, which is the most active part around the world. About every 100,000 years, Melbourne or any other city will experience a very nasty earthquake comparable to the Christchurch or bigger. But we don't know where we are in the cycle. Still to come. You can be prepared or not, but you'll be the one begging if something bad happens. It is a life insurance policy. And an inexplicable connection between a prediction and an event. Just like Mubarak, it said Gaddafi will fall. 